Ahead of inauguration of Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu as president-elect, regional groups are already setting agenda for the incoming administration. Tonight, we discuss the need to unite Nigeria amidst the ongoing presidential election tribunal. And experts urge president-elect Bola Tinubu to focus on synergy among security forces. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anakon. Ahead of the inauguration of Ashwaju Bola Tinubu as president of Nigeria, regional groups are setting agenda for the incoming administration. The outgoing president, Mohamed Buhari, today conferred national honors on the president-elect Bola Tinubu and Kashim Shatima, the vice president-elect. While Tinubu was conferred with the Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, GCFR, Shatima was honored with the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, GCON. The Pan-African Yoruba political group Afenifere and Yoruba Council of Elders are demanding that the president-elect restructures Nigeria. The coalition of northern groups, CNG, is also appealing for an end to insecurity in the north. On their part, the Pan-Niger Delta Forum, PANDEF, and Ikenga are calling for a fair treatment in the polity, noting that Nigerians need to be unified. Now, it is important for the Tinubu Shatima administration to prioritize security and youth employment to formulate policies to reduce security challenges to the barest minimum and also make suitable plans to unify Nigeria. And for us to end the misery of Nigerians, they say we must begin to think along those lines. Joining us to discuss this and more is John Desmond. He is a member of the All Progressive Congress Media and Publicity Directorate Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you so much, Mr. Desmond, for joining us. Good evening. Yes, thank you. Good evening. Great. Uh, let's start by looking at the journey that lies ahead for the president-elect. We know that come next week, um, Monday, May 29, the swearing-in will take place. And, of course, uh, as much as there's going to be a lot of pomp and ceremony, um, uneasy lies the head that wears any crown, especially for one who's gunning to run this country. Um, we know that the elections at, um, you know, whether it was the presidential nor the governorship election, uh, had one way or the other, divided uh, Nigerians more than ever. For, um, the, our no Nobel Peace Laureate, um, Wale Shoenka, had spoken about the division of, uh, amongst Nigerians as a result of the campaign season which led into the election. So the former president, Olusha Um what, what do you think that the president-elect has to start in, in, you know, in terms of unifying Nigerians across the board? Thank you very much, uh, Okun. Uh, during his acceptance speech, the president-elect had said that what we need now is healing and total reconciliation. What that means is that for those who feel bruised during the election, for those who are not happy that their candidate didn't win, and for those who the election didn't go their way, the president elect has assured them that immediately he has Zoom office, he's going to begin reconciliation process that will lead to total healing of the nation. So it's not a matter of where he's beginning from. He's, he has set up agenda for healing every aggrieved Nigerian. Of course, you may not be able to reach to everybody, but as many that loves Nigeria, as many that are willing for the future of Nigeria, the president-elect is ready to work with everybody, including those that voted for him and those that didn't vote for him, including those that comes from his region, because as the president of Nigeria, you are the president of the 36 states of the Federation and the FCT. You are not just the president of your region or of your state. So it's going to begin from everywhere uh, modalities for reconciliation are going to be set up immediately after its inauguration. Already, you can see from some of his uh, 
post-election meetings. Recently had a meeting with the, one of the presidential candidates of, uh, uh, of the opposition party in France. That is uh, NMPP, Kwankwaso, Rabiu, and the uh, other parties that contested in this election have started sending him congratulatory message. This is an indication that the reconciliation move that he's proposing is going to work. And the moment we achieve that, then we can now talk about uh, the development and peace of Nigeria. Okay. Let's look at um, the aftermath of the elections. We saw that a lot of people, or several people, um, were not necessarily um, happy as to how the elections were conducted. Um, there were videos and pictures of violence, you know, and many people feel, uh, you know, aggrieved as to, um, you know, the lopsidedness of how the elections took place. Now, let me bring you to Lagos, where um, there was some form of... Um, go back to your, there was a, a speech, or let, let's call it hate speech, uh, that thrived during the elections. We even saw videos of people saying, if you're not voting for so-and-so so -so person, go home. If you were from this place, you cannot be allowed to vote. We saw things like that thrive uh, during the elections. How does a president deal with issues such as that, especially if the party and the presidential candidate at the time, which he was, did not jump into, you know, in front of this to address it, even after the elections had taken place. The issue is that the, the, the kind of violence that we're talking about this election, and I must tell you that I have been involved in election in Nigeria since 1999. And very soon the post-elections review and documents will be out. The violence recorded in this election can never be compared to what we have been experiencing in the past. And I want to talk about Lagos. Yes, there was an unusual election, electioneering activities in Lagos. You heard during the campaign that some people were claiming that, you know, another man's town is nobody's town. That's wrong. There is no town that does not belong to anybody. So an attempt to challenge those voices, you know, now populate some anger among the people. But that, can, that we cannot say that is electoral violence because Lagos has about 13,000 polling units. Out of this polling unit, it, is, it was officially recorded that only hundreds or less than 100 uh, polling units that were affected by electoral violence. So that's not average of an election. And in, in every election, there are challenges. In every election, there are challenges, including the world best democratic election. So for us to have this kind of challenge and then go on with our election, we are progressing. We are progressing. So for those who feel that, yes, the election didn't go their way, the president-elect has made it clear to you that, look, if there's anything that you feel that, is, that wasn't done wrong, of course, the, to, the, the, the 2027 election, we're going to still have to review the electoral acts where people's opinions, you know, whatever you wish to be included can not come in. But we cannot just bank on the past and stop our country from moving. We have to move forward. Let me take you Election back. Election has come Let and me gone. take you back, Mr. What Desmond. we need now is a united Nigeria. Mr. Desmond, I, I don't know if you can hear me. Let me take you back to my question. I did make reference to some sort of electoral violence. It didn't just happen in Lagos. It happened in different places. But I'm talking about the issue of hate, hate, hate speech that you know we heard around Lagos. It was mostly a Lagos thing. And, I'm say, and you're saying that, oh, we have 2027. INEC does have its job cut out for it. INEC, yes, needs to review some of its policies. We need to look at the Electoral Act and the conduct of the election. But we're talking about politicking here. We're talking about the rhetorics that we heard during campaigns, because this is what we're pointing to. These are the divisive factors, divisive comments. And, and, and I'm asking, again, 
Why didn't the president elect, when he, then he was a presidential candidate, why didn't he jump in front of this to address it? Because there's nothing as a voice, as a voice, especially for somebody who's seen as a godfather in politics, if he was running for an office and these kinds of statements were being made, why didn't he address it as opposed to waiting for 2027? There, there has to be a Nigeria before we even go for another election. How do you calm those freed nerves? Because we've left it to linger on for so long. And I'm asking, how do you think the president is going to have to deal with this? You see, if you have followed the, the presidential campaign of the president-elect, at various forums, he has advised his supporters not to insult, not to engage in hate speech, not to overheat the political system. I quote him at various forums that we are more than this, that our campaigns should be issue-based. But you see, along the campaign lines, there are some there are some areas that ethnic issues came up. For instance, one of the governor from the South went against his own party because he believed. Mr. Desmond, are you still from, there? from the South. And the presidential candidate of his party came from the North. And they couldn't agree till after the election, up to this moment. And the man was very, very angry with the whole setup. Also, there are some issues that came up during the campaign, and I've said it before, that, yes, those people that were in, uh, engaging in those hate species are members maybe of my own party, but they were not speaking for my party based on the issues they talk about. They were speaking for their ethnic concern. For instance, people come up in a town and say, look, this town we have lived here more than 50 years, and because the town is more cosmopolitan uh, city, nobody owns the place. And then because these people are from this ethnic group, they now come out and say, look, this is our town. That doesn't mean they are speaking for the APC. That does not mean they are speaking for the president elect. No. Okay, but then let, let me remind you uh, one of your presidential spokespersons, whether we like it or not, Bayo Nanuga, went on Twitter. I can never forget it. And spoke extensively using very hateful slurs on Twitter. I remember journalists of his likes from the international community. Um, speaking about what he said on Twitter, uh, would you say that Bayo Nanuga was speaking for himself when he spoke about people who do not belong to Lagos coming to um, meddle in the affairs of Lagos or trying to tell them who to vote for? Uh, and some of the things I cannot remember exactly what he said. Was Bayo Nanuga speaking for himself? Being, being that, he was also a representative and a spokesperson for the presidential campaign committee. Now, and we need to separate this and make it very clear. Bayo Nanoga is a Yoruba man. The town in contention is a Yoruba land. Okay? He was not speaking for the APC on that very issue. Really? Because in Lagos State, yes, in Lagos State, we have the APC, we have the PDP, maybe the Labour Party. In fact, during the election, the Labour Party won about two federal House of Representatives. So, and the people are still Yoruba. So are you now saying that he's rejecting the Yorubas that are in other political parties? No. I say there was an ethical issue. And as a Yoruba voice, as a Yoruba elder, he needs to raise the standard. And as an elder, did he, he speak like what? The, the statements that were credited to Bayo Nanuga, did, were they reflective of an elder? Someone who was who's supposedly supposed to unite people as opposed to trying to cause more hate. As we all know, Nigerians are already divided along ethnic and religious lines. Was that a tense... I mean, it was a tense time during the, the, the campaigns. Was that the best time to make such statements as an elder, someone that you've categorized as an elder? 
Well, uh, and it may not be the best time exactly, but there are some issues that clarification needs to be made at any time, at any time. Interesting. Let's move away from that. Let's talk about um, the handshake across the table and across the different regions uh, of the country. Now we know that there are tensions, ethnic tensions in the southeast. We know that the president has to deal with other issues. I mean, as of yesterday, Plateau State had communal clashes that claimed almost 200 plus lives um, and we're still counting. Um, we had some issues also earlier on, um, I think, in um, Kaduna State. Um, and, and there's so many other issues, aside from Boko Haram or um, ISWAP, the president has to deal with all of these issues. Um, with the president also tasked with um, constituting a, an executive council. Do you think the president will also reflect the sentiments of the people in the people he would pick to make up that cabinet? You know, in preparation for dealing with the insurgency, the insecurity, and the different onslaught against the Nigerian Federation, you know, uh, the, pres the, the president elect had said it clearly in his, in his manifesto that they are going to recruit a lot of young Nigeria into Nigerian Armed Forces and Nigerian Security Services. He's going to rejig the Nigerian security architecture. And then he's going to create a national dialogue team to curb the ethnic agitations. Now, in terms of insurgency, the outgoing administration has tried their best. So what the new president needs to do, and he has said it, is to rejig the system, bring men and women who are more intelligent, more professional, who are more proactive, you know, who can deploy all axna, no matter how little, how minimal in their position, you know, to go against those who don't want to accept amnesty and peace to reign. So the first thing he needs to do is to increase the, the manpower of the Nigerian security forces. They are under labor. The, the numbers are very, very few. And he has said it clearly that he's going to recruit a large number of young people. And that's an opportunity to create employment for our nation. Then for the, for the places that we have agitation like the Southeast, of course, is to bring them back again to the drawing board. They are Nigerians. They, 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 they believe what they are saying. And we also believe in one Nigeria, no matter how grieved we are, no matter how angry we are. So what we need now is a sincere reconciliation. You know, the president-elect should be able to get right people to get across to these people. You know, we had a similar issue in 2007. There was, there was nothing Ambassador could do. It was war for war until Yaradua came and then called the leaders of Niger Delta and got their boys into the table and then they granted them amnesty. So we may also go that way for the, for the a trouble area where agitations are high. You know, it, it, it is Nigeria and it is for Nigeria. And the future is our concern. The problem can never, you know, bring us the peace and progress we are expecting. So the president-elect has said it, that Nigeria will build Nigeria. Hmm. So okay. whatever it will take, he's going to go for it. Let's talk about young people. Um, and um, because, again, whether we like it or not, these are the people that are being used by corrupt politicians to rig elections, to cause mayhem. We saw what happened during the end stars. They didn't use old men, they used young people. Um, how do you think that the Buhari administration is going to deal with young people in terms of um, not just creating job opportunities because government can't give jobs to every young person and Nigeria, Nigeria's population is mostly youthful. Uh, and of course, if we allow that youthful population to be idle, of course, that's why we have more sleeper cells for Boko Haram, for ISWAP, um, for um, unknown gunmen. And I mean, the list is endless. And the guys who were busting open pipelines in the Niger Delta. How do you think the president-elect hopes to bring in and equip 
um, this young people going forward because again, the countries like China and India have one way or the other been able to make good use of their large population. And, and that has one way or the other benefited those, their economies. How are we uh, supposedly going to do the same to benefit our economy, knowing that we're also facing a downturn of sorts? John made a lot of attempts to engage the young people uh, in the development of the nation. But uh, the concept was not too clear. You know, Nigeria is a country with a very large population, and about 35% of these populations are made up of young people. The ministry that should have been saddled with that responsibility has no clear data, has no clear concept of what and how to engage young people. For instance, there's a ministry that they call Ministry of Youth and Sport. Now, I, I was waiting to see the scorecard of that ministry, and I've not seen it. Now, attempts were made by the Ministry of Information and a Digital Economic to bring to create a lot of hubs, uh, I, uh, a lot of hubs for young people to tap their their potentials, but uh, the success story was very low. And then the states couldn't do a lot of things. And then we had three years that uh, was just wasted around COVID and all that things. But then. For the new incoming, uh, for the incoming administration, this is an opportunity for for them to harness the Nigerian resources through the young that generation. A clear cut, a distinctive road, a roadmap needs to be created. How to engage these people? It is not only agriculture that that you can empower people. There are a lot of things. For instance, they are talking about the student loan. That's has to be very, very clear, as early as possible, okay. so that everyone... Go ahead. So that when, uh, so that we now know whether the university is going to run on its own, the university autonomous is going to, you know, run, is going to come into play. So the first thing is to stop this ongoing, you know, academic truncation, striking, and this, you know, these are the things that disrupt, that creates, you know, gaps within the younger generation educational okay. system. Right. Now, if they can get that right, then from the NYC, from the NYC, they can look at it again. What do we do with these people? Should we just pull them and give them a three months training and pay them some money to go and engage what they have learned? You know, this is where you can get the prime Okay. young people ready for proper engagement. It's All not right. just to say you create a program. All right. Well, we want to say thank you. Unfortunately, that's our time. John Desmond is a member of the APC Media and Publicity Directorate Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. thank you. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we will continue our discussion from yesterday on Nigeria's security situation. Yes, we're talking national security and agenda setting for uh, the president-elect as he's preparing for handover. Stay with us.